Jackson. All right. So as far as the RST fork goes, it's a conventional fork versus the Fast Ace, which is an inverted fork. Um, the uh, conventional forks are uh, typically a bit more rigid just because they have this cross brace in the middle, so it doesn't rely solely on the through axle uh, to provide its torsional stability. Um, the, uh, both of these forks have compression and rebound adjustment. Um, the uh, RST fork is a coil spring, whereas the uh, Fast Ace is an air spring, uh, top and bottom air spring. Um, they seem to perform pretty similarly. Um, neither of us can really say one is better than the other as far as off-road ability and uh, on-road tracking and ride feel. Um, so the uh, only major differences seem to be that the RST is a bit more durable, being a coil spring. Um, and the Fast Ace fork uh, is a bigger fork um, and seems to have bigger bearings and uh, or bigger uh, stanchion bearings and uh, being inverted looks more like a traditional motorcycle fork uh, like a, you'd find on a modern dirt bike. Okay, Kyle, do you have um, <clears throat> With this one uh, having a coil in it, if you wanted to change the spring rate at all, you'd have to actually take it apart and change the spring out. Whereas this one just uses an air spring so you can adjust it you know, in just a couple minutes with a shock pump. The um, thing about air shocks is they do need to be aired up every now and then, same with tires and anything that requires air pressure. Um, one thing we did notice that because this is an upside down fork or an inverted fork and it doesn't have that little cross member there, there is much more flex in the fork itself. And that's just the inherent nature of upside down. Can you show it to us, Jackson? The yeah. play? And yeah, so on the RST fork, you need to do the, uh, the usual, you hold the uh, wheel and come around to the side here. So you can turn this fork and you can see there is flex. There's, you know, maybe at the handlebar end, you're me pushing and pulling on it, you're seeing like maybe two inches of flex. Um, on the fast ace fork with the same piece, even with the smaller supermoto wheel on it, which gives me less leverage to work with, you very easily get that two inches. And if you want, you can even push it further. You go maybe four inches of, uh, of deflection. You can see how much flex is happening in the stanchions here. So that basically will manifest itself as uh, a little more nervous tracking when you're in a corner. It won't feel settled because the front wheel will be affected and its steering angle will be affected by uh, bumps and road conditions a little more. Um, that being said, both bikes feel great to ride. Um, and so the flex that you do see there doesn't seem to affect it in a huge way. Although we haven't put a high-end fork on one yet and ridden it, so we'll find out in a bit. Can you, can you feel the cushion difference between the, uh, the, fa the Fast Ace and the RST? Yeah, so I mean, both are fully adjustable. Stand up here. Um, you can, uh, I mean, if you crank the, uh... oh, come on. Where's the rebound on this car? Is it uh, screwdriver clickers? Yeah, you need a five. Oh, it's flat blade screwdriver clickers. Okay. So this fork a little trickier to adjust just because it uh, doesn't have knobs. But uh, you can feel like there's plenty of rebound valving on this fork. This one comes up a little slow even. Um, but the stiction is good. It's pretty smooth coming up. But it's um, not box fork smooth. No, not even close. Okay, and here's, let's uh, try it on the... the same thing. Um, plenty of compression and rebound damping available to tune in to your liking. Um, this fork obviously tuned similarly, so it's got that slow rebound. You can see the valving actually working and doing things. You crank the compression all the way up, it goes, it does get really stiff. You relax it off, it gets really slack. Right. Uh, same with rebound. You crank it all the way out, and the fork will respond really quickly. See, it almost leaves the ground there. So, so this one, without a screwdriver, you can adjust it? Yeah. Or is this one you need a screwdriver? Basically, the RST is going to be a lot less maintenance and probably yeah. more reliable. Yeah, a little less maintenance, a little more reliable just because it's coil um, and a little more durable. Um, yeah. As far as absolute strength, the yeah. stanchions on the... Uh, uh, fast ace fork are a little larger diameter and the bearing area is a little larger 
So this one will likely be the absolute strongest fork, even though the RST is a more rigid fork. Um, and it has the bridge yeah. and uh, magnesium lowers. Yeah, magnesium lowers. This fork is a good bit lighter than the RST. Because of the magnesium. than the fast ace, sorry. Yeah. 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 And a look at the Fox fork real quick. This is a $1,700 fork on Luke's bike. After feeling those, he... Yeah, and this one's just like, it's just buttery smooth. Fast, no hop on rebound. Um, really, really clean, big travel. Um, and the biggest difference between all of these bikes uh, and their forks is if you look at how the through axle goes through this fork, a good amount of the fork's rigidity comes from the axle and how it's mounted. You can see there's a really wide clamp area and the axle wall thickness is really thick. Right. Um, when you go to either of these budget forks, you know, they're running a two bolt clamp where the bolts are really close together. Um, like you look at this guy, that, that clamp distance is only that wide. Right. And you go to the Fox fork, and it's, you know, it's got those big web braces on the side. So there's a lot of extra rigidity that comes with the higher end fork.